Welcome back to part two of this tutorial where we're going through creating a Unity WebGL application that can write to a file on the server via a PHP script. Now we've just written this piece of code where we're sending our text to the PHP script using a web form. What we need now is our actual PHP script. So that PHP script is going to be called from Unity dot PHP and that's a text file. So you'll need to create that text file and it's going to look something like this. If you're not familiar with PHP, it's not that difficult. It's quite a nice little language. Um, there's a few little nuances that you have to get used to. I'm not going to be able to teach you all of PHP in a single tutorial, obviously, but I'll just point out a few things as we go through. The php.net documentation is excellent. So if you want to learn it, it's a really great skill. So I would definitely recommend it. If you're going to do more stuff on a server, uh, then you'll definitely need to know PHP. Now we've got um, some variables at the top. Now variables in PHP start with a dollar sign and you can see them here. So I've declared three variables at the top. One's called text one, one's called text two, and one's called text three. Now these three are going to hold the values that we've sent through back in our form. So this is our form. We've created three text fields, one called name, one called age, and one called score. Then in our PHP, we actually use this post method here to get hold of the values that were in those fields from our fake web form, I guess, that were coming through to this PHP script. So you can see those here, they're named exactly as they are in the script here. So that's where they get picked up and sort of funneled through into here. Name goes into text one, age will go into text two, score will go into text three. So we've got these variables. Then I'm just testing that there is something in text one. So I'm just, just for some particular test to show you what it looks like. And I'm saying if text one is not equal to nothing, so if it's not empty, then some data has been sent through to this script, which is nice because you, if you've got like nothing going on in these fields up here that have come through to this script, there's no point writing it out into a text file. Now, anything in PHP that you Echo. Now, echo is kind of like a print statement. So if you run this in like a console, then echo would print these messages to the console or to the screen. In this case, when we do an echo on this PHP, it actually sends it back up the communication link to our file here. So down in, where are we? www.text is going to get filled up with these echo messages and we'll see those in a moment. So these get filtered back to where the call came from and they'll go into www.text. We're going to echo a few things that don't really, I guess, mean a lot. They're just sort of messages to us and it's just going to say message was successfully received or that you sent it successfully. Field one contains whatever you sent through Field two contains whatever you sent through, etc. Now, um, one little nuance in this echo or this print. In Unity in C Sharp, if you're printing something and you've got like multiple fields you want to add together, you put a plus sign in there. In PHP, it's a full stop. So you have to put a full stop when you want to sort of append bits and pieces of information together. Okay, so that's going to send all of that back to our Unity app. Then we're going to open a file where we will write our data to. So it's quite simple. We're going to create a variable that holds onto that file. So this is our little handle to the file. We then run an F open and we give it the name of a file that we want. Now, if the file doesn't exist, it's going to create it for us. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to keep adding stuff into that same file. Now, you can F open with a whole bunch of different parameters. In this case, I've got an A, which means append. 
So if the file's not there, it will create it and put the data in it. If the file is there, it will append stuff to the end. You can also use a write, which is a W. If you use W, then it will create the file regardless. If the file's already there and it's full of data and you do a W on it to write, it will replace the file. So that's the difference. Each time you run this, you would get a new data file, whereas append, it's just going to keep adding it in there. So it's up to you how you want your functions to work. Now we've opened our file, we've got it. Then we can do what's called an F write. So a file write to our file, giving it what we want to write into the file. So in this case, the value of text one, then the value of text two, and then the value of text three. And yes, you could put all these in the same time using that little dot method. If you put dot dollar text two dot dollar text three like that and append them all together and do them in one go. That's also fine. Okay, so here we have the writing into the file, then we're closing the file. Okay, so just make sure that you do close the file to ensure that the data gets all pushed into the file and you don't end up with some weird corruption. Now, if there was nothing that came through in our post, we've got an else and it's going to send back this message message delivery failed which is kind of like saying you got to the php script but you didn't send me any data so i can't do anything with it and that is not a failure okay so remember back in our code we had we can get an error or we can get a success with our php and then get a message this here is not giving us an error the error back in our code here is if, say, this PHP form didn't exist or it was waiting for a password or it just couldn't run, it would then give you a legitimate error. But this here is kind of like, well, yes, I exist, I'm successful. So the whole PHP call will be successful. And then it's just going to send this back as a little message saying, look, I'm here, but you didn't send me any data. Okay, so that is the basic very, very simple structure for our PHP script. Now, where do you save this to? Well, this has to be at the root of the URL because that's where we're calling it from here. So in the root directory of your web server, we're running from unity.php. If you have it in a subfolder on your server, then you would put the folders in here. Now we currently haven't even created that server, but I will still put this uh, from Unity at a root folder for where I'm going to run my server from. So what I've done is in this case, if I bring in my folder structure here, this is the Unity project and inside the Unity project on the upper level, so the root of that, not inside assets or inside anything else, I've created a PHP folder. So I've had to do this manually and then I've saved that script in there. So the web server that we're about to create will run pointing at this PHP folder. So this will actually be the root folder. And when we build our WebGL app out of Unity, we will save it into this so that the whole lot is all together. Then if you were going to put this on a web server, you would get all the files inside this PHP and then dump them somewhere, making sure that you've fixed your URL so it is actually pointing to the from Unity. One little hint is if your PHP isn't running, you could in fact try and just call directly in the browser, type in its actual URL. So the one that we've got back in write to file, type that in your browser at the top and it should run. Okay, you should at least, you'd get this message delivery fail because this is what it's going to return if it didn't get anything come through in a post. And that would mean if you don't see that, then you're not pointing to the right spot on the server to get hold of that file. Okay, so just be sure and double check that you have all that stuff set up. 
Now let's set up our server to point and run inside of this folder. So you've got PHP installed on your machine. You'll need to, just move that out of the way for a minute, open up a terminal window. So here's my terminal window and you'll need to go to this PHP folder. So on a Mac, I can go CD and I can drag and drop that folder and it will just pick up the whole address to that particular folder. Hit enter. And then if I do an LS, uh, it's DIR if you're in Windows, you can see the contents of that folder. So it says from Unity, which is this file here. Now to run a server, all you need to do is we'll find the command here. Type this in at the command line php minus capital S space localhost and localhost is your machine. So this is the URL for your machine port 9000. The port, you can set this to whatever you like. I've got 9000 um, and you'll see back in the code. Let me just put that other road. Let's go back to here and we will see that we have our localhost 9000 there and this is our server so that when we type this at the browser for the URL our little PHP server is going to recognize it and pick it up. Now once you've typed that in hit enter and it's going to go into server mode and it's listening for calls to localhost 9000. Currently there won't be any of course because this um, WebGL thing has to be built out, doesn't it? Okay, so that's our server and it's running. The command is exactly the same for Windows and for Mac. So leave the terminal window open and we'll just put it out of the way because we'll come back and have a look at that in a moment. All right, so we've got our server running. We've got our PHP script there. We've got our script written for our button. We can test this in the editor. You don't have to build it out to a WebGL. And that makes it really handy when you want to make little tweaks and stuff. And you can also edit the PHP file now, even though the server's running. You can tweak this, you can tweak this right as we are now without going to a lot of effort of building and that every time and have it all be like immediately updated and test your stuff that you're doing, which is just great. It's just making sure you've got all this set up, knowing it's going to work when you make it into a WebGL Probably if you're first time doing this, you might want to build it out and test like a real version of it, which we will do a little later. But for now, let's just test this whole lot is all set up and running. So I'll just go back into Unity and I'm going to hit play so I can get my button to come up. So there's my button. I'm going to click on it. That's going to send the message to my PHP, which will hopefully send me a little message back saying, I've got it and here's the values that I've got. Those are going to appear on the console. So let's keep an eye on the console and let's press this. At the same time, we're going to check out what's going in our server window because when this gets a call happen to it, then you will also see it pop up here. And in fact, you won't at this point, will you? Because my Unity window will obscure it. But let me just press this and it's going to send the information to the server. And you can see there, we got a message back. We also, in our PHP window or our server window, you can see here that it got a message coming through calling that from Unity PHP file. So you'll get two sort of feedback when you go through this process that you'll see it pop up in your terminal window and you'll also get the message back from the PHP. So if we have a look down in the console, we'll see that text that our PHP is writing out. So let me grab that so we can compare it. Go to my from Unity. I'll just bring this down here so I can zoom in on it. And what you're going to see is we've got our message successfully sent that comes back. We've got our field one has got Joe Bloggs, field two, 32, field three, 125, which are the values that we have passed through from here. So it's all connected and it's all working very nicely. Now, the last thing we want to know is, did it create that data file? Well, good question. For that, you'll need to browse over into your window and have a look at now 
in our PHP folder, we do indeed have data.txt. And if we open up data.txt, double click on it, you'll see we have our data. It's not formatted very elegantly, but it is there. So we've got Joe Blogs, we've got our 32, and we've got our 125 sitting in there, which I've now mucked up, but that doesn't matter. You get the point. Okay, so that's all working very nicely. Now, what we need to do is build our web form to see it in true action. So I'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.